Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Learner Radiology Brain Tumor Board Review, case number three. For case number three, we're looking at a 70-year-old woman with right upper and lower extremity weakness. Here we have a single image from a CT. Take a look at that, kind of formulate where you think the major abnormalities are. Now we have some MR images through approximately the same level in the same patient. On the left, you have a flare. In the middle, you have a T2. And on the right, you have a blood-sensitive sequence, such as a GRE. On this next slide, now we have a pre-contrast and a post-contrast. Maybe kind of figure out in your mind like what you think you're looking at here. So your question on this case is, what is the most likely diagnosis? So kind of think in your mind, what would you think is most likely there? What's a reasonable differential? And your second question is, what is the percentage of brain metastases that present as solitary lesions? Here you have a range of choices, kind of ranging from 0 to 100%. So in this case, this was a case of breast metastatic disease to the brain. Metastatic disease is when you have a spread of cancer from another organ. When we see it in the brain, it's most commonly arising from lung, breast, or melanoma. Uh, there's an acronym for which are most likely to be hemorrhagic. That's MR, CT, so think about MRI and CT. Uh, it's melanoma, renal, carcinoid or choriocarcinoma, and thyroid. So this is one of, the, uh, one of the things you may see in some of your review books. On imaging, most commonly with metastatic disease, we see well-defined enhancing masses with surrounding edema. Now, these range in number approximately 50% of the time. These are solitary. About 20% of the time, it's two, and then uh, the remaining times, three or more. Most commonly, these occur in the cerebral hemispheres, uh, but they can occur in the basal ganglia and cerebellum as well. Now, here you see that CT. What you've got is you've got a mass back here. It looks like it's a little bit hyperdense to the brain. Maybe this rim of hyper hyperdensity here makes you think about could there be some hemorrhage? You have surrounding edema. Maybe you're thinking you have a little bit of edema in the uh, contralateral uh, parietal lobe here. And in fact, on the MRI, you see that that's true. Uh, you see some flare abnormality there in the right hemisphere, some flare abnormality surrounding this lesion. It's very T2 dark here on both flare and T2, and that's a rim of hemosiderin, so there's been some blood into this lesion. Uh, you also see some gradient effect in that other lesion, so that's uh, confirming that there's a lesion there. So there's at least two lesions in this patient. Now here in your pre and post contrast, you see that second lesion on the right side is enhancing there for sure, because it's not bright on the pre contrast. However, your dominant lesion here is predominantly T1 hyper intense. And again, that's because of the blood products in there. Perhaps there's a little bit of enhancement around the margin here, but no, it really looks mostly like it's T1 intrinsic hyper intensity from blood. Uh, in this case, uh, again, I've already told you the answer to this, about 50% of brain metastases present as a solitary lesion. So if you see a solitary lesion on a test or in your practice, uh, brain metastases can definitely look like this. Now, what would the other things that would be in the differential for this case? Uh, perhaps uh, some sort of high-grade glioma, uh, but the fact that you have a second lesion makes you point towards metastases. Uh, would you be thinking about infection? Also, perhaps, but the absence of abnormal diffusion here is probably leaning you towards hemorrhagic metastatic disease. I want to thank you all for tuning in, and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, tune in next time. We're going to have more brain tumor videos as part of this uh, spring series to get you all ready for the ABR examinations this year. Thanks to everyone for tuning in.